Let's look at how to actually use the capture handler microservice. So let's say we've already added a capture handler and it's located at slash capture as a capture handler with the engine Chrome. When we run Gramex, then the URL slash capture will actually have the microservice. So let's go to um, localhost colon 9988 slash capture. And this says we need to specify a URL. That is the first parameter that we need to provide. What is the URL that we want to take a screenshot of? Now, if let's say we want to take a screenshot of the Wikipedia homepage, then question mark URL equals the Wikipedia homepage. And that by default fetches the page, takes a screenshot and saves the entire page as a single PDF file. Let's go through the options that we can pass to this one by one. I can pass the question mark file is equal to parameter, which will save the file, not as screenshot.pdf, but rather as whatever I specify. So for example, if I said um, question mark URL is equal to the Wikipedia page and file is equal to, let's say wiki. So that's gonna save this as wiki.pdf as you see here, not as screenshot.pdf. It doesn't have to be a PDF. I can specify a different extension that can be PDF, which is the default or a PNG file or a JPEG file or a PowerPoint file. For the PowerPoint file, what it does behind the scenes is captures it as a PNG and inserts it into a PowerPoint slide. Let's show you how you can do this for PNG. I'm gonna request the Wikipedia page as an X equals PNG. And this is gonna save it as wiki.png, which when I open, captures the entire Wikipedia page as a single PNG. And this comes at a reasonably good resolution, meaning it is, if, if you zoom in, you will be able to see it at a normal resolution. We can change the scale, the width and the height, but we'll come to that in a short while. If the page takes a long time to render, then we may want to increase the delay. Um, for example, if I take HTTP bin.org, then it loads, it has a loading icon, and then it loads the result. So if I specified, um, let's say, HTTP bin.org, then let's see what exactly it captures in the PDF. It's got a screenshot.pdf, and that has a loading icon. Now, what if we explicitly want to give a delay of, let's say, 1000 milliseconds? Let me do that. In fact, let me increase the delay even further and say delay equals 2000 milliseconds. So that's going to fetch the request and then the browser will wait and come up with an output. And now we see that it has actually been rendered. So if you know that the page that you're capturing, say a, a dashboard is actually going to take a certain number of seconds to render, then you can put question mark delay equals thousand. If you don't know when it's rendered, then what if you have control over that particular page, then you can put in question mark delay equals a render complete. What this does is waits for a global variable called window.rendercomplete to become available. And when render complete becomes available, it will render it or it'll wait for 30 seconds as a delay, which is the default delay. If render complete is not available, it'll still just render it after 30 seconds. Now, this means that when you know that the dashboard has been rendered, in the dashboard, you have to explicitly set window.rendercomplete equals true or some such thing, and then the dashboard gets loaded. This is particularly useful when you aren't, or when capture handler is not able to figure out if the page has actually been fully loaded or not, which typically ha happens with Ajax requests and dashboards that are dynamically rendered. For PDF files, there are a few more options. You can specify a format which is basically the page size, A3, A4, A5. So let's, for example, take the Wikipedia page and uh, let's say format equals A3 and see what this does. We'll compare this with a format equals A4. So this is format equals A3. Let's take format equals or tabloid. And load this, this is format tabloid. You'll see there is a slight difference in the width and the overall page size is also different. These are the A3 page is slightly wider, the tabloid page is slightly taller. 
you can also specify the orientation as portrait or landscape. So if you said, for example, orientation equals portrait, then the page becomes wider rather than taller. Let's take a look at this. Um, oh, sorry, uh, I should have said portrait equals landscape for wider. Portrait is the default option and load that. And now we have a wide page instead of a tall page. You can specify media as print or screen. What this does is prints it as if it were going to be printed. So if we take the Wikipedia page and do a print, you'll notice that it looks slightly different. If we want to get this effect, then we can say question mark media equals print. And this will take the equivalent of a print preview version and show that instead. We can also specify a header. This header can be a string that will be added to each of the pages as a title. Um, let's put in a standard title. Let's uh, say an header is equal to uh, my new page. And if I do that, it will fetch the Wikipedia page, add an explicit header, my new page, and it will add it on all of the pages. You have a fair bit of control on what the header uh, could actually contain. Specifically, you can use a set of dollar variables. You can say dollar page number, that will give you the page number. So page one, page two, etc. Not with the word page, but just the number one, two, three. Total pages is the total number of pages. So you can say, dollar page number slash dollar uh, total pages, which will be page of so many pages. You can use the current date, you can use the page title, and you can use the page URL. You can also separate the titles with pipe. And what that does is anything before the pipe goes to the left and anything in the after the first pipe goes to the middle and anything after the second pipe goes to the right side. So for example, if you said question mark header, equals dollar title. This will create a dollar title in the center and nothing on the left, nothing on the right. Before the pipe, there's nothing. Before the first pipe, there's nothing. After the second pipe, there's nothing. Let's take a look at what this does for the current page. You'll see the header, capture handler takes screenshots and that exactly is the title of this page. Similarly, if you want the page number on the right hand side, so let's click on this. This will take a screenshot of this particular page and the header will have the page number on the right, on the top right. You could also specify a dollar page number slash dollar total pages, a copyright on the left, grammar in the center and this string on the right. And you can combine all of these. You, you don't, it doesn't have to be just dollar page number. You could say page space dollar page number. And that gives us a header with the top left top center and top right saying one of eight, two of eight, and so on. Footer works exactly the same way. Instead of header, you replace it with footer and you get the result directly. In addition to this, you can also specify the HTML head, the header as a HTML template. And when you do that, you are specifying as part of the URL, a full fledged HTML string which you can place in the header in the, uh, uh, on the top, which will allow you to define how the header should be rendered as HTML in its entirety. So what this does is specifies a header template where we have a div, which has a border bottom of one pixel solid black, and it's displayed as flex with space distributed in between and has a 100% width. Inside this, we have two things. A, a span class is equal to URL and a span class equals date. And these are replaced by the respective dollar values, dollar URL and dollar date and rendered. So let's see what that looks like. So you have the border that comes in at the bottom and you have the date that's rendered here and you have the URL that's rendered here. This is how a header template works and the footer template works in exactly the same way as a header template, except it appears at the bottom. You can also add margins. The way you specify margins is by specifying the top, right, bottom, and left margin. 
and you can leave some of those blank. So this, for example, specifies the top margin, nothing for the right margin, the bottom margin, and nothing for the left margin. With that, let's take a quick look as to how that looks. This will download a PDF file, and you'll see that the top margins are larger and along with the bottom margin, whereas the left and right margins are somewhat less. For images, there are a set of options that allow you to control the size of the viewport. So for example, if you said width is equal to 600, it will take a screenshot as a PNG file, but with a much smaller width. The default is 1200. And now you can see that this page is fully captured, but with a much smaller width of the page, just half the default size, but it does capture the full page. If you don't want it to capture the full page, you can explicitly specify a height. So if you said height is equal to 600, it will take the width as the default, 1200. The height, however, is capped to just 600 pixels and that's what it looks like. So this is how you can take a screenshot of just the top portion of a page. You can also increase the scale factor. So if you want this to be zoomed in, then you increase the scale factor. So scale is equal to two makes the image bigger. Or if you want to zoom out, then you can use a smaller number. So here we are zooming out five times. So the fonts should look really small. Let's see. Yeah, okay, um, zoom in. And you'll see that it's barely legible because we have zoomed in well beyond the, uh, the resolution of the file. But it still captures the whole page. You can choose to control the height using the question mark height is equal to parameter. Supposing you want to capture only one particular selector, let's say just one chart, then you can put question mark selector is equal to the CSS selector. So in this page, we are capturing a dot content, which is a class content. Let's see where that is. I'm going to search for a document dot query selector of dot content to see where exactly this is. So there is a section class is equal to content. Let me uh, reveal this in the elements panel it's somewhere here. Let's uh, see what exactly that content is. So the content section is just the center portion of this, not the extra items on the side. So the bulk of the page is the content section. So when we took a screenshot of that, it takes a screenshot only of that particular element. And in this particular case, what that means is that the stuff uh, outside of it on the top and the left, all of that didn't appear. I'm going to try and zoom it. So you'll notice that the header bar did not appear. It just starts with capture handler takes screenshots and did not capture anything outside of that, such as the Gramex guide. So this allows you, the dot the question mark selector is equal to, allows you to capture any portion of a page specifically for images, that is PN, uh, PNG and JPG. Um, that apart, you can also emulate a full page on a specific device. And that you can do by using question mark emulate is equal to the name of the device. There are a series of device names that you can use, and these are available as puppeteer descriptors. So you can say, for example, emulate Blackberry Playbook, emulate Blackberry Playbook landscape, and so on or a Galaxy Note 3, and these will appear as if they've been emulated on that device. Let's take a quick look at what that will look like. If I emulate an iPhone 6, then this page is going to be captured as if it were on an iPhone 6, which yeah, has a pretty small width, and it's captured to within that particular width. There are a series of options for PPT as well. These are fairly similar to what you would use in the image. Uh, as well as a PDF. You can specify a layout, which tells you the slide layout. You can specify the dots per inch, which is kind of like the scale factor. The default is 96. If you say 192 dots per inch, then that doubles the resolution, making things look smaller, but sharper. Width and height work exactly as you would expect for images. Selector works exactly as you would expect for images. You can also add a slide title with a specified font size. Let's see what that looks like. You'll see this downloaded as an image and then inserted into a PPT as a screenshot.pptx question mark file equals works. So you can change the file name. 
let's repair this <clears throat> and you have a slide with a title which is ignore this a uh, slide with the title first example and it captures the particular selector we had selector we had chosen a selector dot code highlight so it just takes the first code highlight class and renders that as an image in this ppt you can specify the x and y positions of this so that allows you to move it around and this is specified in pixels by default it centers the whole thing you can actually use multiple slides so you can say question mark selector is equal to something and selector is equal to something so here you have a selector is equal to dot toc and a selector is equal to dot code highlight and each of those are given a title so what this does is creates multiple slides and each slide has a specific selector so if i open this you can just quickly repair this and the first slide has the toc which is the notice the table of contents page this selector and the second slide has the code highlight and each of them have their respective titles whose font size and style you can independently change in case you aren't sure if the request is working you can and you have access to the console logs then you can specify a debug uh, level so let's say we have this page and i want to get the uh, let's say wikipedia main page query url equals wikipedia main page and debug equals 2 what this does is gives every single thing that capture handler is doing as a sequence so in this case all it did was just fetch that page and there was nothing else that was happening behind the scenes but if uh, let's say we take something else like um that requires extra fonts like grammar.com/gramex and specify the debug you'll see that it's providing a few more details such as it's trying to download a particular font that didn't work it didn't particular it, it didn't load this particular resource and a few other parameters which are displayed on the console and that can help you debug things much better one thing that you should remember is when we type these urls on the browser the browser automatically encoded it but if you happen to be using it in a programming language let's say in a python script make sure that you encode the urls what that means is if the title has a space then the space should be converted to a percent 20 if you have a hash for example if the selector is a hash item then you can't say equals hash item it should become percent 23 item so make sure that the urls are encoded in whichever language that you're using whether it's python or javascript one other feature is that authentication automatically happens so if you're using capture handler on the same instance as the page that you're fetching so for example in this case we are running the gramex guide and the gramex guide has a capture handler and when we click on any one of these it automatically fetches the page from the same instance it also passes on the cookie so if we let's say log in now what i'm going to do is go to this particular page and log in i can log in as let's say the user alpha with password alpha and click on login it now goes to this particular page capture handler and i am logged in and if i go to the auth page i can see that i'm logged in as the user alpha So let's take a screenshot of this particular page and the way we'll do that is by clicking on this particular link. You'll notice that this link is actually pointing to the capture handler and saying that the URL is the current page and extension is PDF. Let's click on that. And open this. Oh, okay the url should have been uh, not dot but slash auth so inspect let's change the url um to um dot dot slash auth so we take a screenshot of the auth page and save that and then click on this so now it's go it's capturing the auth page it should download that in a few seconds yeah we have a screenshot and you'll see that we are now logged in as a user alpha the reason this happens is because capture handler takes whatever cookies we pass to it and sends it to the same page that we are capturing 
the HTTP headers are also passed through, so which means authentication will work by default. There is a final option that you can use in case capture chart, in, in case capture handler, specifically the node backend was not started or for whatever reason crashed, then you can safely restart it by adding a question mark start. If it's already running, it will ignore it. But if it is not, then you can use question mark start. And this is something that is safe to use in any circumstance. That was an overview of how you use the URL query parameters in Capture Handler.